Local programming on KRWG Public Media made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Anthony Moreno. Welcome to Your Legislators. Joining us to talk about New Mexico's legislative session and issues facing the state is District 34 Republican State Senator Ron Griggs. Welcome to the program, Senator Griggs. How are you today, Anthony? This is going to be fun. Yeah, doing very well. It's always a pleasure to talk with you about the issues facing your district and our state. Uh, you are taking part in a 60 day legislative session here in New Mexico, up in Santa Fe. What are your thoughts so far from the session and where do you think things are going right now? You know, Anthony, I, I think with this particular session, when you look at, at the makeup of the legislature, which is heavily, heavily democratic in both houses, uh, the bills that are being introduced by Democrat legislators are the ones that are going to have the most uh, most traction throughout the the year, and so when you look at some of the bills, you need to understand that uh, that those are the ones that are going to get the attention, unless a uh, you know a Republican bill is you know just incredibly important. Uh, I think they will you know will get attention some, but they're going to get the most of it. So you need to look at the. I mean, the gun bills, uh, the abortion bills, different things, they're, they're gonna be the stuff that uh, attracts the attention and gonna be the stuff that uh, will be passed and sent to the governor. Now, you mentioned uh, possible gun control bills being discussed and um, you know, there's also spending debates that are going to happen, of course, every legislative session. But is there anything specific that you, as a Republican and your colleagues, are really concerned about uh, in the legislature this year? Well, you know, we're concerned about having a fiscally responsible budget. And so one of the things that happened just recently is that the, uh, the feed bill was passed. And in the feed bill was a two and a half million dollar appropriation to do a study to determine whether or not the legislature ought to be paid. Uh, that normally that wouldn't be put there. Normally that would be a standalone bill, which would happen uh, and it'd go through the process of debate and, and determination. It would have still passed, but the, uh, the majority put it in the feed bill to just accelerate the process. So I think what we're gonna see throughout the year are things like that, where the, uh, the stuff that they deem important will get some, uh, uh, I don't know, probably some additional encouragement that uh, other bills won't. Now you brought up uh, this, this uh, uh, piece of legislation basically to put in the feed bill um, to uh, pay, perhaps examine looking at paying lawmakers in New Mexico. Since you brought up that issue, I kind of want to get your perspective on it. Where do you stand as far as uh, paying state lawmakers, do you support it or are you against it? You know, Anthony, I've been in the legislature now for, this is my 11th session. I was on the city commission in, in Alamogordo. Uh, city commission of Alamogordo, they paid us $50 a regular meeting of which there were two every month. So the most I could make as the city commissioner was $100 a month. I joined the legislature and I don't get paid at all, you know, get per diem. So I haven't been very successful at finding one of these uh, political jobs that I make money at. But we felt like in Alamogordo that there needed to be more uh, salary provided to commissioners in order to do two things, sort of track maybe more people and uh, get more people who potentially are working uh, who could then join the uh, commission because they knew they could leave their job and, and still cover some of the expenses. Uh, that was immediately successful. Uh, first, first time out of the box, we had more candidates than we've ever seen. Since then, it went back to the same old, same old, where you didn't have the candidates you thought you would get. 
So I, I'm not sure it will accomplish the goal that uh, the folks who uh, who are pushing it. I don't I don't know that it will. But at the same time, I don't I don't know that paying the legislature ultimately is the wrong thing to do. You certainly will have some people that make it their uh, their real job to be a, a legislator, and and you just have to determine determine as a constituent whether you think that's what is good for you know for New Mexico or not. Does somebody need to be a full time legislator? Uh, you know, maybe paying money to us so we could have staff so we could better respond to constituent questions. Maybe that's a better approach. But uh, we're just going to have to see what comes out of all of this, because I think there's more than more than one bill. And we'll we'll just have to see. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you're, you're kind of looking at both uh both scenarios with this, uh, but do you support putting this before the voters to weigh in on? You know, I mean, those certain things should go before the voters. I, I'm not 100% sure this is something that fits that criteria uh, because that's just in who's pushing and who gets, uh, uh, gets the message out harder. Uh, I think it, let's let's debate it. Let's lay it all out out there, and then let's impose it or implement it, uh, because that's what you've elected us to do—to make decisions like that. Uh, what we feel like ultimately is the best for the state. Now, if we come in there and say, "Well, we need to pay everybody, you know, a hundred thousand dollars, hundred fifty thousand dollars," well, maybe that needs to go to the voters, because then there's a big physical impact on that. But if you're gonna if you're gonna pay your legislators. Forty thousand dollars a year, or you're going to pay give legislators forty or fifty thousand dollars so they can have a an office in uh, one or, or two communities. You know, maybe that's something that doesn't need to go before the voters. So I think it's all Anthony going to depend on. Well, what is it that ultimately comes out of the legislature? And uh, you'll probably see the law approach, and you'll probably see the constitutional amendment approach. Okay, so just. I want to move on to other things and talk about legislation you're working on. But first, before we leave that topic, uh, do you support uh, the creation of this committee to investigate and present their findings on if lawmakers need to be paid in New Mexico? You know, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Let them look at it and see what they come up with and recommend. Because, you know, I may have my opinion, uh, but they may actually persuade me one way or the other, because they have determined that the public uh, feels that the issue is such that we should be paid. So let's see. Okay. Uh, Senator, I want to move on and talk about the budget. Uh, this is something that uh, you've, you've shared a lot of thoughts with us in the past. Uh, we're in a situation where New Mexico state revenue forecasts are looking very positive, thanks largely to the oil and gas industry in the state. What are your thoughts on the budget, what the governor's proposed so far, and what are the conversations uh, like in the Senate on what you think is going to come out with a proposal on the budget from the Senate? Anthony, I'm, I don't sit on uh, on Senate finance, so I don't I don't have the opportunity to hear those right now mm -hmm. to know what what they're thinking. There's a difference between what the governor's office has recommended and what the legislative finance committee has put together. Uh, now, some of that may be just solely related to the possible rebates to the, the citizens. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of money out there. Lots what, of money, lots of places to put it. Yeah, the governor brought it. I mean, but you I, I know you're probably aware of what the governor proposed and, and talked about in the state of the state address. Was there anything that really drew your attention to that you feel strongly about either way, supporting or against? There was no, there was no surprise. There was no surprise. The governor, the governor's been extraordinarily generous and she's looking at, you know, being uh, being all things to all people. That is a, it's always a challenge. And so you've got to look at well, what she said, what she said with uh, uh, the, the abortion clinic down on the, on the border, is that a, is that a good thing? The uh, uh, healthcare for all basically approach, is that a, 
Is that a good thing? Is it affordable today? And will it be affordable tomorrow? Those are, I mean, you just got to look and get into the meat of the of the legislation to determine whether or not it, it's a good deal or not. You know, is, is and here's the, here's the, the S word, is socialized medicine the right way to go with, with New Mexico? We've got a, a bill that passed a couple of years ago, uh, House Bill 75, which has been damaging to the number of doctors we've had in New Mexico. We've had doctors leave because that increased the cost of medical malpractice. Uh, if we don't address that, we may have more doctors leave. And then if we if we don't have the doctors here in New Mexico, is the is the answer to provide clinics everywhere and then have the uh, have doctors or specialists hired to work for the state i don't i don't know what they're really thinking and i don't know what that that approach will be but the governor seems to really want to provide uh you know health care for all and while that's an admirable goal how you do it is the is the kicker well, I know there will be plenty of debates on that as we move forward within the legislative session on how to go to address that issue. Uh, let's talk about some issues you're bringing forward. Now, let's talk about the legislation that, that you are presenting that has to do with geothermal resources. Can you explain with us uh, this bill, what it is and what it entails? You know, that, that bill actually turned out to be way, way more simple than I thought. That's a, that's a bill that was put together by Senator Ortiz Pino, and Senator Woods and I uh, signed on to the bill. It, in, it incentivizes some geothermal development and opportunities. Uh, it's, you know, it's doing the same sort of thing that we've done for, uh, for wind and solar. And, and I believe, I believe especially in our part of the world, you know, we might have some real opportunities with that and uh, I look forward to seeing how the discussion goes, because I can't I can't imagine this legislature uh, really having a, a real difficult time with it. So I expect the the bill to pass and I expect the opportunities to be there for uh, uh, for us to implement fairly large scale type uh, geothermal projects. Yeah. Well, what sort of projects do you think uh, can be developed with this? Now, I mentioned that this is also could provide some opportunity for universities as well within the region. Can you talk with us a little bit about that and perhaps the opportunities that may be available there? You know, Anthony, the uh, I'm not quite sure how that will, will will mesh. But if you if you've got these, we've got ten million dollars. Uh, for certain loans and 10 million or 15 million dollars for for others uh, so it's not like there's just a tremendous amount of money jumping out there and doing that but if you believe that you could set up a geothermal project to the uh, to the west of Las Cruces for instance to provide uh, power to Picacho Hills uh, maybe that's that's one of those things that might be able to uh, uh, utilize or access some of the dollars to develop and then take that take that further and expand it more and maybe that could be a real uh, opportunity for the city of Las Cruces. Uh, as far as the university goes, I could see the same the same thing. Now uh, in that bill it talks about the duties of the Energy Conservation and Management Division within the Energy Minerals and Natural Resources Department uh, perhaps being changed a little bit. Is that correct? And could you explain a little bit about what that entails within this bill? You know, I'm, I'm glad you've looked at that in, in depth because I, I can't. I don't know exactly what it is that, uh, that the, uh, the group that put it together really, really wants from that. But, uh, uh, you know, that's all we, we, we need agencies that can focus on things and focus directly on things instead of being, you know, overseers of way more stuff than they can handle. So let's hope that's what that does. Well, I'm sure you could share with us the, the organization you are working with to on this bill uh, to uh, develop it and get it passed. Can you share that with us? You know, when uh, when Senator Ortiz Pino brought this bill forward in committee, an in interim committee in Clovis, uh, several years back, Representative Townsend and I did a a revamp of the solar 
or solar of the geothermal laws for uh, for New Mexico, and that was at the behest of the Environment Department, and we put put that together. So when when the senator brought this bill forward, we said that well we participated in that other deal, and so he asked, well would we want to join on on this bill? So you know you're concerned immediately because you hadn't been involved in the in the drafting of the bill, so you don't know. So you say, well we're going to have to see it. So we saw the bill right after the session started, and there's no real big, nasty, bad things in the bill. So it's something Senator Woods and I felt like we could support uh, because it might be doable and positive for for the state. Uh, So as far as all the little intricate parts, we haven't been involved in them enough to, to, you know, say a lot about it other than we believe it's a positive thing for New Mexico. Okay, I I, uh, I know that their state is going to be having a lot of conversations. State lawmakers will be continuing discussions on where to move forward with energy within the state and possible opportunities that may impact our economy uh, in, in many different ways. But I, I wanna move on and talk with you about another bill that you've been, um, re- you've been sponsoring that uh, has to deal with prescribed burns in New Mexico. Can you share with us a little bit about Senate Bill 6? Uh, it's um, it's actually Senate Bill 21. Oh, okay, thank you. And it was, it was tabled in committee this morning. So the bill, uh, the bill will not move forward unless a member of the conservation committee that voted in favor of the tabling wants to bring it back up and, and talk about it more. It was, the bill was immediately tabled once it became, once it came uh, committee members opportunity to talk. So I don't know. I don't know what the members of the committee were concerned about. Uh, so I have, I have no real good feel. It, it was, um, it was defeated in committee four to three or tabled in committee four to three. And what the bill had done, Anthony, is it, limited prescribed burns uh, to times outside of the months of March, April, and May, the windy season in New Mexico. Is it the right approach? You know, it's hard to hard to honestly say, but we've had prescribed burns get out of control. We've had communities uh, have a lot of property either adjacent to them or even in them burn. We've had areas close to major uh, population centers in New Mexico, Los Alamos, Las Vegas, Rio Dosa, uh, and they've, it's, been, it's been terrible for the, the people who lost property. And of course, anyone who might've been killed well, was pretty bad for them too. But uh, the Forest Service has uh, for years done prescribed burns and often or seemingly often, those fires get away from them. And they do because the conditions were such that maybe the fire should have never been uh, initiated, but uh, even if it was uh, imp- uh, started correctly, it got away and something happened. The largest fire in New Mexico's history is because of a prescribed burn. Uh, so it, it's real problematic in our state and what do we do about it? And so this was an approach to let the people of New Mexico know that the legislature in New Mexico is at least talking about ways that we can protect them from acts of, uh, of government in this instance, but you know, protect them where we can. You know, Because you can't protect everybody against fire all the time because there's a lot of natural cause fires. But if you have a prescribed burn, that's a... That's a man-made fire, and we can do some things about that. This was just the first approach to try to say, let's stop them in the spring, and then maybe we can go, we can find better approaches as we move forward. Now, this has been such a topic of discussion over the past year as New Mexico endured two of the largest wildfires in the state's history. Uh, Are there any other things you think lawmakers need to consider to address this issue? 
you know, it, it, this one was simple. Let's just cut out the, the windy season. Uh, are there other things that might be done as far as if there's cer- certain moisture content in the, in the air, in the, in the fuels, what, what things might look like if you, if you do those? Uh, we'll see. I mean, I think with this bill being introduced, this being discussed, I think it's going to stir the pot a little bit and people will start looking into ways that we can better uh, better do some of the stuff we already do. You know, the Forest Service tells us that they're looking hard at ways that they can change their procedures so they uh, uh, don't run afoul of this issue. Uh, and I hope they do. I hope that's right. But I'm afraid that, you know, just like with what they've done already, is it'll still get away from them. And something's going to happen that is going to be even more tragic than has happened today. But if there's other ways, I'm open to them all. I just wanted to let the public of New Mexico know that the legislature of New Mexico hears the challenge that they face, and we're willing to take action or at least discuss taking action so they know that we've got their backs and we're working for them. Okay, now your district uh, has a lot of rural areas within it. Now, we've t- had conversations in the past about rural issues uh, that are concerning to you, especially when it comes to uh, developing rural economies in our state. What are some things that you think you can do as a state senator to help address this issue? You know, one of the, uh, one of the things when we talk about economic development, we passed uh, a couple years back, we passed a bill that would help uh, bring in large economic projects. Uh, what we've got to do is we got to figure out, well, how do we help bring in smaller ones? How do we bring people to New Mexico? One of the things that uh, was passed last year was a uh, decrease in Social Security taxes. So somebody like me, if it doesn't make a whole lot of money, I get to... Uh, I get to write off, or at least my social security is not taxed in New Mexico, because I'm not one of those guys at the high end of of social security payments. But what does that do? That potentially brings people to the state who then contribute to the economy, but they contribute to the service economy. If you want uh, pizza, if you want something there, that's what they're going to do. They're not going to add to the workforce. Uh, Senator Burt has a bill that will do that. That particular bill was uh, was sponsored last session by uh, uh, Senator Pope, which reduced the or actually reduced the amount that military retirees would pay because now they get $10,000 off of their uh, pay exempt from tax. Next year, it'll be $20,000, and the next year, it'll be thirty. Senator Burt this year has just uh, gotten rid of that ending time because it was going to stop right after 30. You would get two years of $30,000, and then it'd be over. So you'd go back to paying tax on, on all of it. So Bill has introduced a bill that will say, okay, we're going to exempt $30,000 of your retirement pay each and every year. Those guys are, are, for the most part, highly trained individuals looking for for jobs that uh, uh, fit their skill set. So they give us an opportunity to look for certain types of uh, businesses, knowing that we've got these people available to uh, to work for that company. Absent that. We've got to try to recruit companies that bring their workforce with them. And I don't know that we've done a good job of, of that, but that's kind of what I, what I see us trying to do. We need to encourage those companies because and we need to do that with our tax structure. And we're working on our tax structure this year. I'm not, I haven't seen any of the bills, but we're working on it. So we'll, we'll see what happens and maybe those will, uh, Maybe people will see that and say, you know, that will be a good thing for New Mexico. That's a good way to do it. Uh, I might be surprised if, if that's it, but let's, let's hope it is. 
Well, we only have about a, a minute and a half left with you, but I'd like to get your thoughts on something that's been of concern to not only lawmakers, but folks within the country. And that's just kind of the dialogue we have with uh, our politics. Um, you're somebody that's served in the Senate for a long time. It's been widely reported that for the most part, uh, you all serve longer terms, so you know each other a little bit better. What is your thoughts on our, the way we discuss addressing these issues in New Mexico? Do you still see it as a, being a cordial or do you think uh, things are really as divided as we maybe hear a lot in the media? You know, Anthony, the Senate of New Mexico is a, is a very uh, deliberative body for the most part. Uh, you've got uh, a, a larger number of Democrats than you do Republicans. So uh, any bill that they really want is going to pass. Most of the time, the Senate is very respectful in its debate. And some of that is because we serve four year terms and we know the other senators better. Uh, we have. Uh, solid relationships with them, whether we agree on policy or not. Yeah. The House, on the other hand, the, it's turning over, it's up for election all the time. It's, uh, it's just a whole different environment in the House. But, uh, you know, frankly, I'm going to lose most things. They're going to win most yeah. things. So it's easy for me to raise my hand and vote no. It's yeah. real easy. They've got to come up with the stuff that governs New Mexico, and I hope they do it right. Okay, well, thank you so much, Senator. I really appreciate you taking the time. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but thanks for joining us on Your Legislators. Thank you, Anthony, enjoyed it. I wanna thank you for joining us for another episode of Your Legislators. I'm Anthony Murnell, we'll see you next time.